Hello, what is up everybody? Today we're going to be taking a look at NFL Week 7, my game predictions, my thoughts. Um, so yeah, let's just get straight into it. Heading in to the first game of the week happening tonight, Thursday Night Football, we got the Giants playing the Eagles, both teams who have been pretty poor this season. However, <clears throat> while the Eagles have been ravaged by injuries, and I mean ravaged, their quarterback has played awful, they're not worse than a Giants team that doesn't even feature Sa Saquon Barkley. I think the Eagles win 24 to 13 here. They cover their line. I just, you know, the Eagles are not worse than the Giants. They're not. They're, you can't argue it, honestly. Then moving on to the second game of the week, Sunday morning football. We've got the Saints battling the Panthers in New Orleans. And I think the Saints win 31 to 23. They cover their line. Um, both of these teams have been pretty good. And I'm surprised, actually, that the line is, is, is as big as it is because the Panthers are 3-3. Three and three. They're literally, they have one more loss than the Saints. The Saints haven't been that good this year. Drew Brees looks really washed up. There's a lot of question marks around that team right now. And the Panthers have been very surprisingly good without Christian McCaffrey. Now, of course, the system that they run using Christian McCaffrey is something that can be done by other running backs. And Mike Davis has done a phenomenal job filling in for him. Definitely hasn't been as good as Christian McCaffrey, but he's been good. And when, I, when Christian McCaffrey first went out, it seemed like that Panthers team had absolutely no chance. I mean, he's not only the lifeline of their offense, but he's also the lifeline of their entire team. But Teddy Bridgewater has done well enough. DJ Moore has been playing really good this season. Their offensive line has held up really well for Teddy Bridgewater, actually. Um, you know, the team's just done surprisingly well. But I think they'll give some competition to the Saints. However, I don't think they're better than the Saints. The Saints have had some troubles with injury, and they've had their questions this season. Drew Brees it looks washed up, but they're not washed up enough to lose to the Panthers. Then the third game, we have the Bills traveling to the Jets. Is it a question here? If you think the Jets are going to win, you're a delusional New York fan. I'm sorry, but th this isn't even going to be close. The Bills are going to easily cover their 13-point line. I'm surprised it's not bigger than that. I think the Bills win 38-6. to This is just, you know, the Jets are rebuilding. Sam Darnold is not good. I never thought he was good. You know, honestly, Jets fans just kind of got screwed that the Browns took Baker Mayfield, uh, and it's just it's bit them in the behind ever since. I think Josh Allen's a good quarterback. I, I thought this year he would take that step into the next role, and it's looking like he is. The Bills have a great defense, and everyone's played really well for them. It's just... Need I explain more? This is a total mismatch of a game. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the Jets went 0-16 at this point. Um, it's kind of hard to say that they're worse than any team, so therefore it's hard to say that they would beat any other team. So I think Bills win this game easily. It's a big blowout. Then moving on to the next game, we have Baker Mayfield and the Browns heading to play Joe Burrow and the Bengals. And I think the Browns win this one pretty simply, 28-14. to You know, some touchdowns thrown. Uh, Nick Chubb is out, and so obviously the Browns still have Kareem Hunt. And uh, I forget, Dearness Johnson has had a few solid weeks. Um, the Bengals have a lot of untapped potential. Joe Burrow looks like he was the right guy to go with number one. Uh, T. Higgins, I was very high on him coming out. He's looked pretty good. John Ross is playing a bit better than normal. A.J. Green is unfortunately very washed up. I think A.J. Green's done at this point. He's had too many injuries at this point in his career that it's just hurting him any, anymore. The Bengals' defense is also pretty underrated. But the Browns win this game because Baker Mayfield has definitely looked better than last season. I don't know if he's as good as his rookie season. But the the part where the Browns really shine is their defense. And that's great because that's why I think Kevin Stefanski was a great choice for a head coach. They needed somebody who could help that offense because that defense is already good. I mean – you know, Miles Garrett is potentially going to be one of the best defensive players we've ever seen. I mean, the dude's just absolutely phenomenal. You know, they have tons of other guys along there. They drafted amazingly this year, as for last year. The Browns have been drafting amazingly the last few years. Um, they have some really nice safeties. Uh, it's unfortunate Grant Del Pitt went out, but luckily their backups have stepped up. Andrew Sandejo has been great for them. Um Denzel Ward continues to just become a better and better corner. The team's too talented, and this is really looking like finally their year. 
which I know we said it last year, but they didn't start off fine five and two last year. Like I think they will this year. So moving on to the next game, we have the Cowboys traveling to play the Washington football team. And I'm pretty surprised. Actually, the Cowboys are the underdogs in this game. Now, listen, no Dak Prescott. Ezekiel Elliott is playing like crap compared to normal Ezekiel Elliott standards, but they are not worse than the Washington football team. Yeah, they've been awful. But they're not worse than them. I'm sorry. There are two teams in the NFL that are dysfunctional, like straight up dysfunctional. That's the Jets, and that's the Washington football team. Like, the only team I think could beat the Jets is the football team, or the the only team that I think the Jets could beat is the football team. And I think the only team that the football team could beat is the Jets. So I don't think the Cowboys can lose to them. If they lose, if the Cowboys lose this game, then they need to go into rebuild mode. Because if Amari Cooper, and of course, yes, Dak Prescott, not there, it hurts. But if Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, Ezekiel Elliott, I know they've had some injuries on the offensive line, but it's still a great offensive line. On the defense, they have guys like Demarcus Lawrence, a super deep rotation of defensive linemen, Sean Lee, Leighton Van Der Esch, which was hurt, but I think he's coming back from injury. And then... You know, the secondary, of course, isn't the best, but with a team like that, you should not be losing to a team like the Washington football team. If they do, some serious thinking needs to go into this team, and that's why I can't give them the loss because it's you can't lose this game. You just you simply can't. So I have the Cowboys winning this one. Then going on to the Packers and the Texans, I think the Packers take this one easily, 30-13. to Texans have been looking a lot better these past couple weeks ever since they fired Bill O'Brien. Um, but a lot of people overreacted to Green Bay's loss last week. Yes, it was her it was a horrendous loss to the Buccaneers, but the Texans are not the Buccaneers. The Texans are, you know, they're a bad team. Uh, you know, the David, the David Johnson, DeAndre Hopkins trade just looks more and more like just an idiotic move by Bill O'Brien, and it's hurting them very bad. I mean, DeAndre is just thriving over there with Kyler Murray, so you know, I don't think the Packers have a reason to lose this game unless they hurt themselves way too much. I think this is an easy win for the Packers. Then going on to the Lions and the Falcons. Um, technically, this is an upset, although I think these teams are pretty much the same in in essence of they have talent, but they're not talented, if that makes sense. The Lions have guys like Matthew Stafford, which is very underrated. Uh, Carry on Johnson has a lot of potential. Kenny Galladay has already shown us his potential. The Lions have a lot of good young players. Um, the Falcons, on the other hand, have a lot of good old players. And, you know, experience will always rule over inexperience. But here's my problem. The Falcons have no idea what they're doing when it comes to coaching. Lions, yeah, you can argue Matt Patricia isn't the best head coach. I would argue he's not. He's he's not a good head coach. But he at least has a direction and knows what he wants to do with his Lions team. The Falcons have no direction. They have no game plan. I mean, heck, their players don't even know you can pick up an onside kick if you're on the defending side. They don't even know that. They're not disciplined. They have no direction. They're a team that's just – it's it's broken. I feel sorry for guys like Matt Ryan and Julio Jones that have to be there because they have to suffer playing for that team. And that's why I think either one or both of them are going to be traded by the trade deadline. I just think the Lions are just a better team because they have a better direction and they, they're just – they have talent all over the place, whereas the Falcons' talent is on the offense. Then, moving on to our game of the week, we have the Steelers playing in Tennessee against the Titans, and I have the Steelers pulling out this one in a close game, 34-28, which would actually be an underdog game because the Steelers are technically the underdogs here, which I don't really understand because both of these teams are undefeated. They've both been phenomenal. Obviously, there's Derrick Henry with the Titans. Ryan Tannehill is really starting to look like the guy they paid him to be. A.J. Brown is playing really good, and that Titans defense is only getting better. The Jadavion Clowney signing was a great, great move. But then you look at the Steelers. Last year, they looked very washed up. James Conner, what happened? Juju Smith-Schuster, what happened? Well, I'll tell you what happened. Big Ben happened. Because this season, as soon as they got Big Ben back, Big Ben looks like he was never gone. James Conner is back to becoming a premier running back. Juju looks like old Juju, right? Even with the retiree of Ramon Foster, their offensive line is still solid. And then you look at the defensive side of the ball where they have the likes of 
TJ Watt, one of the best up and coming defenders in the NFL, Bud Dupree, who you cannot sleep on because if you're covering all of TJ Watt, you're going to leave him basically unblocked. You've got Chris Wormley, a very underrated defensive tackle. Cameron Hayward is a monster. And you haven't even talked about beyond the defensive line yet, but beyond their pass rushers because then. You know, they lost Devin Bush, but their linebacker depth has definitely shown that they're worth being there. And then you look at their secondary, Steven Nelson, Joe Hayden, Minka Fitzpatrick. Like, this team is so talented everywhere that, like, I just, I can't see the Titans winning this game. Their defense is built to handle guys like Tannehill and Henry to shut down those guys. And while it's still a close game, I think that defense is too good and their offense is too good against a Titans defense that is still getting better, but trying to find their way. I think it's going to be a very entertaining game, though. I could see it going either way, but I have the Steelers taking this one. Then on to the Seahawks in Arizona to play the Cardinals. I think the Seahawks win this one 30-28. This is the favorite game of this week, apparently, for an upset to happen with the Cardinals. I don't think it'll happen. I think Seahawks go 6-0. Russell Wilson is the best quarterback in the NFL. And that's highly debatable because, of course, many people will say it's Patrick Mahomes. But listen, Patrick Mahomes has a better arm than Wilson, right? Tom Brady can read a defense better than Wilson, right? But Wilson can read a defense. He can throw the ball great. And he can run way better than Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady can. So, in my opinion, he's the best quarterback. And then you give him guys like you know Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. Greg Olson hasn't been great, but he's been a capable tight end their offensive line has been very hit or miss for games but like the cardinals don't even have chandler jones for this game which is going to hurt them a lot against a seahawks team that if you want to beat you have to put pressure on you're without your top pass rusher which has been one of the best pass rushers in the nfl for the last five years what are you going to do you know the the cardinals defense is improving and i love kyler murray and deandre hopkins But the Seahawks' defense is only getting better, which has easily been their weakest part of their team so far, was their defense. But you look at it, and they're just going to get better, like I said. That's why it's a high-scoring game, of course, but I just think that the Seahawks are way too talented. And then now there's talk of Antonio Brown coming to the Seahawks. I, I don't really get it because Earl Thomas left the Seahawks because they didn't want him because he was toxic. So then you're going to bring in the most toxic player in the league. It doesn't make sense to me. But if they do bring him, he is undeniably an amazing talent that would just make this team even more unstoppable. So I have the Seahawks taking this one. Then moving on to Kansas City going to Denver. Um, I think the Chiefs win this one narrowly, 37-30. to 30. Uh, I think the line's a little too big. But um, the reason I think this is going to be a close game is because uh, I think – the, the Broncos offense is, it, they just got a bunch of players back from injury. I think they're getting ready to show who they are. Since the beginning of the season, before the beginning of the season, they've had way too many guys out with injury. So there's a reason they're two and three, right? And obviously the Chiefs are the Chiefs. You know, they're arguably the best team in the NFL. Um, I still think the Chiefs win this one. The Broncos are not good enough yet to beat the Chiefs. But they're definitely going to stay in it. They're going to be the most competitive they have for a long time. Um, And so, while I think the Broncos will stay in it, I just ultimately can't say that they'll beat the Chiefs. Um, But I do expect them to be able to find the end zone this week more than once. Then we have the Jaguars playing the Chargers. I'm surprised this one has as big of a line as it does too because they both have been awful. The Chargers are 1-4 and and the Jaguars are 1-5. and That same amount of wins, I mean, there's no denying that the Chargers are a way more talented team than the Jaguars are. Jaguars are rebuilding. Gardner Minshew looked like maybe he's the quarterback of the future, but these last five weeks we've seen that he's not the quarterback of the future. With the Chargers, I mean, they have talent everywhere, offense and defense. Joey Bosa, Melvin Ingram's on IR, but Melvin Ingram, Linval Joseph, Kenneth Murray was a great pick. I mean, you talk about Derwin James, who's been hurt, but when they get him back next season, unfortunately... He'll be a monster for them. And then you look at their top three corners. All three of their top three are starting caliber guys. Chris Harris Jr., who is getting a bit older, but Casey Hayward is a top five corner in the NFL. And Desmond King is also like a top 10 corner. So 
three of their their top three corners are all like top 15 guys. So there's talent all over this team. And I haven't even talked about guys like Keenan Allen and Hunter Henry. But the problem is they're coaching in their quarterback. I don't think Anthony Lynn is a good fit for the team. I never thought he has been. And Justin Herbert has shown flashes, but he still has yet to win a game. Um, and Tyrod Taylor, he just got cleared by the doctors after he got his lung punctured about a, about a month a month ago. Um, so I'm not sure if they might even actually start him for this game, possibly. But this might be Justin Herbert's chance to be like, hey, I can at least win a game. Sure, it's the Jaguars, but I can at least win. Um, but I'm predicting it's a small win, though. I think these are both bad teams with, you know, in the Chargers case, they're missing a few pieces, but it's hurting them badly. In the Jaguars case, they're rebuilding. Like, you shouldn't expect them to win. But I think it'll still be close, though, because the Chargers are just, you know, they like to shoot themselves in the foot a lot. Then moving on to the 49ers and the Patriots. Uh, Patriots are the favorites here, and uh, I don't think that they'll win because I think 49ers win 28-20 to because, let's be honest, the 49ers would be better than 3-3 three and three if not for injuries. I mean, Nick Bosa, Richard Sherman, Jimmy Garoppolo is now out. George Kittle was out for a while. Like you, I just named off like four of their top five players were out for either some time or still are out. So, you know, and they're still three and three. It shows you the talent that this team has. Whereas with the Patriots, you know, that was a very, very ugly loss to the Broncos. And while, yes, they hadn't trained for a couple weeks, I mean, this is Bill Belichick and the Patriots. It's Cam Newton. Like, this team is expected to beat washed up bad teams like the Broncos. And instead, they let the Broncos win because they got six field goals. The best part of the Patriots is supposed to be their defense. And sure, they didn't allow any touchdowns, but they allowed six field goals. That was a Broncos franchise record. Like, you you can't lose games like that. And after a performance like that, like, I wouldn't be surprised to see the, the Patriots get beaten by the 49ers worse than what I'm predicting. Um, but they've got to figure out something. I don't know if that was just a product of not training for two weeks. Of course, training is very important, but... That was just such a horrible loss. I, I think that loss was worse than the Packers to the Buccaneers. So that's why I see the 49ers winning here. They're a much more talented team than their record, and the Patriots aren't. Is it the end of the Bill Belichick era? Who knows? Because that battle of Brady versus Belichick right now, leaning heavily towards Brady right now because Belichick ain't looking too good without Brady. So moving on to the last game on Sunday. Sunday night football, we got the Buccaneers in Las Vegas to play the Raiders. And I think the Buccaneers take this one in a thriller, 33-25. to 25. Um, The Raiders are a very good team, very young. Josh Jacobs is going to be a top three running back by the end of this year. Um, Had a phenomenal rookie year. They've got talent everywhere. Super large depth, depth at the wide receiver position. Darren Waller is a very, very good tight end. Their offensive line is good. On the defensive side of things, they have a lot of young players that are only developing. You know, Cle- Cleland Farrell was a weird pick, but he's not horrible. Max Crosby was a gem in the draft. He's been amazing. They have all kinds of guys. But the thing that struggles with me is Derek Carr. I've never thought Derek Carr was the right answer, and I still don't. I don't know if I ever will think it. And then you take a team like the Buccaneers with talent at every single position. I mean... You know, the one of arguably the best thing about the Buccaneers is their pass rush. So Josh Jacobs might tear them up, which is why this is a high scoring game. But I think they're going to get to car way too much. They're probably going to be causing a lot of turnovers. And their secondary isn't no joke either. That was people's concern with the Buccaneers was, well, their secondary sucks. Their secondary su- Their secondary has been great this year. That's why the Buccaneers are so good. So I think they're going to take this game against the Raiders. And last, we got on Monday Night Football, Bears heading to play the Rams. And I think the Rams take this 17-7. to um, You look at both teams, and these are very defensive-oriented teams. The Bears, would, without any doubt, would not be near as good as they are without their defense. Khalil Mack, we all know Khalil Mack is a game-changer. Eddie Jackson has, re, has been re- revived basically i mean he's playing good again now kyle fuller the same thing kyle fuller looked 
really bad after Vic Fangio left, and now he's starting to play good again. Um, even with Eddie Goldman opting out, this defense has been great. It's why they're where they are, because their offense has been bad. Mitch Trubisky <laughs> played like Mitch Trubisky, and Nick Foles is decent enough to help them win games, not hurting them at least. Allen Robinson hasn't been playing at full strength because, well, obviously he wants a contract. I don't know if they've given him that yet, but um, the team's just, it's very defensive-oriented. And then you look at the Rams, they're also defensive-oriented. Obviously, Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey is a fantastic duo, but the rest of the defense is also very solid. Whereas with the Rams on the offense, they have guys. Jared Goff is a capable quarterback that can throw to a guy like Cooper Cup, who becomes a big and bigger and bigger name in the NFL every single game he plays. Malcolm Brown has been a nice running back for them. But um, the thing really is Tyler Higby because the Bears have some good linebackers, well, very good linebackers in Roquan Smith and um, and Danny Trevathan, but I think Tyler Higby is going to like rip them up this week. Um, I think he's going to be everywhere, and the, they're going to be struggling to cover Higby, and that's going to be the ultimate X factor. That's why the Rams are going to get those two touchdowns is through Higby because I just feel like the those two linebackers, they're really good, but against wide receivers. They're smaller linebackers, speedier. I think they're going to struggle with a big, strong tight end like Higby. So I have the Rams taking this one over the Bears. Um, so that is my predictions for NFL Week 7. Uh, let, me know, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. Hit the notification bell if you want to be updated for all content coming out. Tomorrow is probably going to be uh, an interesting video. I guess we'll see what it is. But I hope you guys enjoyed. And